Good morning, my name is Rupert maitland titterton and uh, very grateful and thank you for the Academy to invite me to come and speak here today. Um, you've started to hear some common themes from some of the other companies here, and hopefully I can give a little bit more color to that as well. Um, we're just another part of the puzzle, and it is a very, very complex puzzle. Um, I would like to say you are the most demanding and articulate audience that I have to talk to. There are two other audiences that I have to speak to. One is at the kitchen table every day with my children, uh, 21, 18, and 15 and they want the truth from me. Uh, and also I work at a food bank on a regular basis as well, so they want action from me. So what I hope I can give to you today is something that's authentic, it's credible, and it's also about actions and outcomes as well, because that's what I'm working with on a day-to-day -day basis. So as I sort of, uh, some of you may have read my abstract, if you haven't, uh, there's some key words that I would like to bring to your attention from where we are as the Kellogg company. And I think Tia made a great point just then. We are individuals, we are human beings, we're not an entity, but we are people as well. The key words I'd like to uh, bring out for you are the fact, you know, we want to be seen as an agent for change for nutrition, and there's a lot that rides on that. Uh, we as a company, we're committed to addressing these critical issues, and I'll talk a bit about that in a, session, uh, in a second. We expect to be transparent. We think these issues are very interconnected, but I think interconnected in the way that my colleagues from Barilla and Ferreira have started to hint on, but weren't really being played out yesterday, and I'll come to that in a second. Um, the issue of hidden hunger is very high on our agenda. To, um, Vinita, coming back to your point earlier. But also, it's, about, it's also very good business for us, and I can demonstrate how it can be good business for us and how we translate these activities into being good business. There are many people in this room who know the facts much better than I do, um, but there are some of them that I think jump out as part of this discussion that, that we hold as being very important for us. Uh, 1.3 billion tons of food is wasted every year, so a third of food is wasted. Now, we had a discussion briefly yesterday afternoon whether those uh, numbers were accurate or not. We talked about decimal points and whatever, but I, I live in the UK, and the UK media is very big on the fact that, you know, consumers throw away a third of the food that they buy. So the third number is sufficiently accurate, I think, that we can work with it. But I think that element of the, of the 1.3 billion, that's 45 trillion gallons of water. It's 24% of the water used in agriculture. And that waste leads to 8% of greenhouse gases. So whichever way we look at it, and the numbers may be slightly wrong, it is a tragic waste of production, tragic waste of resources. If we then spin it on the other side of the conversation we were having yesterday, 800, 850 million people are malnourished or undernourished. Very high rates of uh, children under the age of five with anemia and also with vitamin A, and also dying of hidden hunger. And then I think what we can say, and again, coming back to Vinita's point, you know, for those of us who are not scientists, there's a tragedy of waste and then there's a tragedy of hunger as well. So how do we come at it as, as a company? How do we see it working? And the way we talk about it, um, and, and, and this is starts to bring in how, uh, you know, corporations work at it, we see it as being very in interconnected. We see it being connected globally, and we see it being connected all the way down to the farm itself. And so I'll talk a little bit about how we start at the top and then we work it all the way through to, to, to the farms themselves. The framework that we use, that we're encouraged to use, is, is through the SDGs. So that really is how we are trying to frame the work that we do, particularly in this space around zero hunger number two. Gender equality, gender equality is hugely important for us as a company. We've selected almost to go further than other people would expect us to do. Uh, food loss and waste, 12.3. Climate action, 13, and also partnerships, 17 as well. And partnerships are very important for us and they're becoming more important for us. But I think what sits behind it and is the fact that we, there are many of us in the business who can say this makes good business sense. And time and again, we will put together the right things to do, but we will, will, we will build a strong business case behind it because we have to build strong business cases behind it. Companies won't just invest just because. We have to build good business cases. And what we find in this uh, area here is that you know, sustainable, climate-resistant, robust supply chains all the way down to and including the farmer and the smallholder. That's the secret for the future for us because, because global food security issues are here and there now. We can see it all the time. We see it in the purchasing. So it is in our you know, combined interest to build and make these supply chains as resilient as we possibly can. But for a business, and, and again, I'm bringing up the point this morning, how do you um, allocate your resources? How do you point your people in the right place? Uh, you know, how do you get 30,000 people to push in a particular direction? 
And so you need a strategy. And the strategy that we have, uh, and many of you will have, may have read our CR report, but it's there in black and white, is to attempt to drive transformational change in addressing the issue of food security through delivering our commitments in hunger relief, nutrition, and sustainability. So we, are, we expand it beyond just nutrition. There are other elements that will kick in, and you've heard a little bit about that earlier as well. And so I want to take each of these three first. I'll start with nutrition, then I'll go on to um, uh, sustainability, and then hunger relief in terms of what are we actually doing. Well, we, we've set out and we've articulated we want to be an agent for change for nutrition. So, you know, we want to be held accountable for that. And there's really three areas that I just want to allude to now, as, as which we can probably talk about a little bit later on. There's an awful lot of incremental renovation going on with our established products. You know, if they're high in salt and sugar and fat, then there's a lot of work and a lot of resources going into uh, renovating them to Im improve the nutritional profile of them. Um, I worked very closely in the UK one recently on removing 43% out of a product called Cocoa Pops. Uh, it's a, you know, you may know it's sugary, uh, it's sort of Rice Krispies. Um, that is now underneath government guidelines in terms of what is per perceived as a healthy product or not categorized as a healthy product. So there's a lot of work goes into it. What I would say is the moment you do that, consumers come back and say, why have you taken all the sugar out of the lovely product I used to have? I don't like the taste anymore. So, you know, the business case has to be built in a strong way for us. So incremental renovation, a very important part of the work that we do. The next piece, and this really picks up on some of the work that uh, colleagues here were talking about yesterday, Dr. Yolanda Sange was, uh, Sange was talking about the microbiome. Very, very important for us. And, and it's, it's going to reshape what we are doing as a business from a nutrition perspective. It really is. I can't tell you how, how uh, revolutionary it is in terms of how it's reorientating our nutrition community to think differently about the foods that we produce. So microbiomes for us is going to be a very, very big push in the future. Uh, thirdly, there's a huge amount of work going on, again, in terms of the work people have been talking about here about breaking the cycle of malnutrition. Um, and this is really built behind a, a simple strategy of making every bite count. And it is about making quality food, uh, nutrition, affordable and available. There's an awful lot of words in there, a lot of intents in there. But the direction of travel for developing these foods is about making food nutrition more affordable and more available. So that's proper, you know, real sort of nutrition work that is going on as we speak. If I move on to, and remember I said that we believe that the issues are all interconnected. On environmental sustainability for us, this is an area that we're under similar pressure from civil society and governments to, to, uh, to deliver on. And so we have a lot of work going into that as well. Um, quite simply, it's about reducing waste in the first instance and reducing the impact on the environment with the production that we carry out. Food waste for us, we've reduced in terms of waste going to landfill, which is a very obvious and a horrible thing to see. It's gone down by about 68% in the last 15 years. And we have another commitment in terms of 15%. And we'll be held accountable for these externally. The whole point is we expect to be held accountable and we'll prove them. We have a number of projects that go all the way down to farmers uh, and, and, and livestock holders in the various different parts of the world. And that is working with third parties as well. Um, in Bangladesh, uh, we work with potato farmers to improve yield and, and reduce wastage. We do that with USAID, with, with great yield increases and, and great reductions in spoilage issues. In Egypt, we work with uh, Technoserve uh, in terms of improving rice and date yields, and again, reducing waste. So really getting right down to the farmers themselves. In the Philippines, we work with the International Rice Research Institute, again, on reducing spoilage. And all of these we see as uh, improving uh, the smallholder income, and that is a, a, a place where we can actually intervene. Now, one of the things I was thinking overnight was, are we thinking about not only improving their, uh, their livelihoods, but are we thinking about their nutrition? No, I don't think we are, but it's, it's an interesting point to consider. Could we actually intervene even further down in terms of helping out from a nutrition perspective? And the final one, which I just want to allude to here on sustainability, and it's, it's about education and the power of education, is, is around SGG5, and something that's important for us. Uh, and in India, we've worked very closely with the government there to teach women, to teach other women about kitchen gardening techniques. And that's been very, very successful. And in, you know, I think it's, we all around this room would agree that empowering women in, in low and mi middle income economies is a very powerful way of driving very positive change and improving the economy as well. So the third part of it is, is really around hunger relief. So a little bit on nutrition, a little bit on environmental sustainability, and the final one's on hunger relief. Um, this again is, in, in a company, where do you orientate 
uh, your resources in terms of where we want to try and intervene and improve. And, and Kellogg has uh, chosen to do it around sort of hunger relief. So that really is what we call our breakfast cereal programs as well as our food bank programs. So what are you know, nice words, what are the commitments in there? Uh, we set down that we would provide three billion servings um, to you know, um, uh, food banks and the like by 2025. We're already at one billion. Uh, and, and what that gives us in there is and, and I'll talk about the positive business loop in there in just a second, but a lot of uh, employees will volunteer in the food banks. I'm one of those. They will get a great sense of what Kellogg can do when it puts its mind to it. And it is about making sure that food, unnecessary food, is not going to landfill. And if I can just explain where those servings or where some of those servings comes from, again, think back to the waste that we were generating out of our factories and boxes of cereal that are not being sold. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It just hasn't been sold. Well, all we now do is say, let's be a bit clever about it. Let's take those boxes of cereal. Let's take them to the food banks. And why don't we do it in there? So, so there's, you know, basically, um, you know, food is not going to landfill. There's no reason for it to go to landfill. It's completely edible. It just hasn't been sold through a supermarket. So we will reroute it then through to the food banks as well. It's a, it sounds incredibly simple and easy to do. It is ridiculously complex to do. But it is something that if you fo focus on it, you can make it happen as well. So where we really come at this from in, in, in terms of, of talking to this August group today is it's, it's two things. It's really about driving for tangible outcomes and it's about driving for new commitments, really. Those are the two things we're trying to work on. Um, and for us, driving for tangible out outcomes around building resilience all the way down our supply chain because we believe that if people have the right education, the right tools, and we are helping them to increase their yields as, as farmers, uh, you know, working on far, farm holders. Education is a key part of that. Teach them about, you know, farming, um, farming practices, reducing yields, that type of thing, that will improve their livelihoods. And the other one is about driving for new commitments, and, and Vinita and I had a joke about this earlier on. These commitments come from the top. And, and uh, about 18 months ago, we announced a, 60, a, a, a determination for 65% reduction in emissions by 2050. Uh, the top guy committed to that. Nobody else in the company knew how to do it. We were all appalled when that came out. We will get there because we've committed to doing it. We don't know how to do it yet. So, you know, tangible outcomes and driving for, for, for tangible commitments, very important part for what we want to do. So in terms of what we're doing next, um, it's about accelerating these programs. It's driving further into these, and we do have changes going on in our nutrition team, and I've been talking to some of my sort of colleagues around here. There's great opportunities for people in this room to assist us in some of these areas, such as microbiomes, aflatoxins, and things like this. Um, we'll be driving up our work on microbiomes, I've just mentioned. Uh, we will be absolutely be driving our work on affordable uh, food nutrition that's made more available. Um, now, I'll just finish off by saying before the questions, I did test this on my guys, my two critical audiences, uh, my children and the food bank, and they said, yeah, Ruby, that's fine, great words, get on and go and do it. So they're not happy with me just talking about it, they want to see action. So thank you very much, Vinita. Thank you.